everybody! So I am having a great time getting to know my first graders. It's the beginning of the year. Everything is fresh and new, so it's very exciting. So I wanted to share with you a few of my favorite read-alouds for the beginning part of the year. So they're books that either lend themselves to the community building or doing something for the first time to kind of launch into different activities like writing and art and stuff. Where I can, I'll share with you some of the activities I've done related to those read-alouds. And if I can, I will insert some photos of actual student examples of work. Okay, so the first book is called The Dot by Peter H. Reynolds. And in this book, the character, the main character, Vashti, doesn't think that she can draw. And her teacher sort of inspires her to just try and see what she can do. And she ends up discovering her passion for art by making dots. And it's just a really short read. It's great for the beginning of the year because, you know, attention spans are short. So we talk about how sometimes we don't think we can do something or something seems too hard for us. And then we give it a try and we discover that we really like doing that thing. And then we get better at it by doing it over and over again. So Vashti paints little dots and then she says if I can paint these little dots then I can paint big dots um, and it's really a beautiful beautifully illustrated story with the watercolors and ink so then the students notice the style of the art in the book and we begin talking about what we want to get better at in first grade so that's where our hopes and dreams come in which is from Responsive Classroom. So I will share with you a couple of my previous year's hopes and dreams. So this was a couple years ago where I said, I hope I make new friends. And I showed the class how I could use, first use pencil to sketch my picture. And then I went back and went over my lines with Sharpie. So I, I modeled that for them. And then I use watercolors just like in the book, The Dot. And then we learn how to write a sentence, we practice that, and then we come and write the sentence for what our hope is that we get better at or our hope and dream for the year. Another year, I did this one. So, you know, I share my, my goal for the year as earnestly as I can. I mean, these are actual goals that I have, so if I'm expecting the children to do that, I do the same. So this year it was, I want to learn and play with more learning apps on the iPad. And if I can, I'll put some pictures of what my students came up with this year. I always like to read something about families and how all families are different and all families are alike in different ways. So this was a decent one that I got from Scholastic last year. I like it because it has photographs. It's um, just very straightforward, easy, quick read, but it brings in the idea that there are all kinds of families. Families look different. They could be big, they can be small. Um, sometimes people and families look alike and sometimes they don't. Sometimes families have children born to them, some adopt. You know, kids will say, oh, I know what that means, or what is that? And we might talk about what is adoption. Some children have one parent, some have two, a mom and a dad, or two moms and two dads. Grandparents can be in the family. Sometimes families don't live together. Talk about separated parents. All families have fun and like to be together. They help one another. There are many different kinds of families. What about yours? So then we talk about our families and our pets is a, a nice invitation for the children to talk about their families and build community around something very important and meaningful to them. So another thing that I have done is have the children write a book about their family. Next I have Wolber. I love this book. It's very cute.
picture book about a sheep who does not run with the flock. And he wants to be his own sheep. Um, he's just different, and he likes being different. And his parents are very worried about him because he's always seems to be doing something different from all the other sheep. So this is a great book for individuality and, and really being proud of who you are. Uh, I love the, the recurring theme of this book is, isn't it great? Because the parents keep saying, why, you know, but you, did, you, you didn't do what the other sheep did. And he's like, I know, isn't it great? So the kids love to repeat that over and over. Let's do this one, Each Kindness. Is a beautiful story and beautifully illustrated book by Jacqueline Woodson and it's about a girl who is not very nice to a new girl at school and you know it's very realistic and serious in that way in the story the the main character is kind of telling the story about how she she had all these opportunities to be nice to this new girl but she didn't take those opportunities and then one day the new girl isn't at school and then the next day she's not at school and the next day and meanwhile the teacher is talking to the children about kindness and how each kindness that you put into the world ripples out and has an effect on others and so the new girl doesn't come back to school she moves away and the main character is sad because she never got a chance to um, kind of redeem herself in that way so it ends on a sad note actually but which is kind of refreshing because you know most children's stories have their happy little ending and they wrap up nicely and this one kind of leaves it to the children to start thinking, wow, you know, sometimes you don't get a second chance and each day matters, each kindness matters. So what we do is I give each child a stone, which I got at a craft store, just some smooth stones, and we put them in a bowl and each child says, just like in the book, um, a kindness. So after we have come up with one thing each of us has done that's kind, big things, small things. We do some writing about it. Uh, this was a bulletin board that I put together of different kindnesses that the children had shown. And I made out of construction paper the bowl with the ripples. Um, and then each of these is supposed to be a stone. For example, I would hold the door for someone. Um, I could say, congratulations, you won, things like that, to help people put things back where they were. If someone asks me to play, I would say yes. Um, so these children were thinking about something they could do in the future to be kind. Another story that helps with writing connection is Rocket Writes a Story. Uh, Rocket is a series with this little puppy character. And in this story, he wants to write, but he's a little frustrated about not having anything to write about. He can't think of anything. So the first thing that he does with the help of his little teacher, which is a bird, is collect lots of words. So they go out and when he's inspired by a word, the, the, the bird would help him to write it down and they add it to their word tree. And then he ends up becoming inspired by something and writing a story about it and is very proud of himself by the end. It's very cute, but also a great beginning of first grade story because it's his first story and a lot of first graders say, oh, I've never written a book or oh, can I do that? I don't know. They're very ready to explore writing a story. So what we did this year is after reading this, we all went outside with our clipboards and I brought index cards just like in the book. We collected different words. And I mean, look at this stack of words. They came up with lots and lots, like this is supposed to be a tree, cold. I asked them to use their senses. You know, how do you feel? What do you see? What do you smell? School, frog. This person wrote and drew flower, spider, stick, house. 
So after that, we come back to the classroom, and the, I drew a big tree on the board, and everybody came up and taped one of their words up to the word tree. And our next step will be to write a story together using some of the words. So that will be a shared writing experience. Uh, another beginning of the year book that I love, it's probably one of my favorites, is The Colors of Us by Karen Katz. The main character is learning how to mix paints. She has her, her aunt, who is an artist. Um, she's mixing paint colors to make a range of skin shades so that she can paint all the colors of the people. And so they go out and they look at people in the neighborhood and notice all the colors of skin and compare them to things like chocolate brown, cupcakes, peachy tan, um, the color of honey. So it lends itself to a talk about descriptive language and about diversity. Last year, after we read this book, my class was inspired to look at their hands. They, they started putting their hands together, like you see in the, the beginning. That inspired uh, the children sketching their hands, and we talked about what we appreciate about our hands, what our hands can do. And it inspired a little art project where students trace their hand and then they, um, well, let me read you what was on our bulletin board. We love our hands. We looked closely at our hands and made observational drawings of them. We shared what we appreciate about our hands. We noticed that our skin shades are all different, just like in The Colors of Us. And we used these Crayola colored pencils that are they call them multicultural colored pencils. I showed them how to blend colors with colored pencils. So coloring very lightly and then kind of using your finger to smudge it around and then add other colors to it. So here are the shades that come in this eight pack. I think Crayola could do a better job of um, putting different shades together because I find that this is a bit limited, but theoretically you can make lots and lots of different shades by combining these colors. The Recess Queen. Now, I think that this book is out of print because I was looking for it and I couldn't find it on Amazon or anything. Definitely pick it up secondhand or something like that. I love it. Um, it's, again, it's short and sweet. Um, this is Jean. They call her Mean Jean Recess Queen. She's kind of a bully and she always does everything first and has to get her way until a new girl comes to school. She doesn't know about Mean Jean, so she's just like, oh, I'm gonna go first and do all the things I wanna do. And the other children are like, ooh, what's gonna happen now? So she kind of stands up to Mean Jean, but then she does something radical by asking Mean Jean to play with her, and everything changes after that. Very simple, but this opened up a conversation about recess success. So we talked about like, how can we have recess that's super fun, that feels good for everybody and people are having fun and everyone feels included? Like what will we have to do to make sure that that happens every day at recess? Something that my class came up with a couple years ago is well, we could have a plan before we go to recess so we kind of know how it's gonna go. And then they said that each letter in the word plan could stand for something else. So they came up with P for play together, L for look for friends, listen to each other, A for ask others if they want to play, and N for being nice and remembering the golden rule, treat others the way you want to be treated. So this was hung up on our door that goes out to the recess yard, and I need to remake it for this year, but um, it was a nice visual reminder, so remember to have a plan. What does P stand for? Play. What is L? What is A? What is N? It's just a quick, like, you know, cheerleading session before they go out to recess. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Definitely give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel if you want to see more. Bye!